Finally, some honesty to the climate change debate. Real honesty. The UK's leading scientific authority has admitted that there are some problems with the science of global warming. The Royal Society, described as the definitive voice of science, now admits there are gaps in the scientific understanding. The Society's published a guide to understanding climate change in a bid to cut the confusion and also cut inaccurate claims. It shows where climate change science is clear and where it's less certain. Now, it's undercut many of the claims about massive ecological disasters, by the way, suggesting the warnings about mass floodings are a ploy used to support political agendas. Now, it's about time scientific bodies took a more cautionary approach to dealing with climate change instead of these scare tactics, which we've seen time and time again. And it does just go to show climate change forecasts can't be accurate. And if they can't be accurate, how accurate is the actual science? The Professor of Mining Geology at Adelaide University, Ian Plymer, has been an active sceptic of the human role in climate change. He's also the author of Heaven and Earth. I've had him in the studio a couple of times now. Professor Ian Plymer joins me today. Professor, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chris. Now, did your football sides get up on the weekend? Well, if you imagine my croaky voice, uh, mm. yesterday I went to the Dragons-Roosters game. Right. And I celebrated a little bit too hard. Oh, right. You flew up from Adelaide for the game. Uh, yes, and it's early afternoon and I'm suffering badly. <laughs> I am really suffering. I think it's something in Sydney water. It is. Because I didn't get that in Melbourne when I went to the game there. <laughs> That's it, mate. Wasn't the Melbourne water. So we lost one there and we got one uh, one up. Uh, we went to Saints on both and yeah. we... We lost one and we won one, but I, I reckon it's Sydney water, you know. Yeah, that's all it is. That's all it, it is. is. I was drinking 95% water. You don't want to go overboard. No, exactly. But uh, I'm not feeling good. I'm on the shady side. Well, so. congratulations. Commiserations for Saturday. Congratulations <laughs> for yesterday. Now, why do you think the Royal Society has come out now and admitted there are holes in the climate change debate? The Royal Society has a fairly active membership. 40 of the members complained bitterly that the executive of the, Royal, of the Royal Society was pushing a political agenda and not stating the science as it was. Because in the past, the Royal Society had got us into an awful lather um, about the catastrophic future and how we're all going to die and fry. And that was related to one four hundredth of a percent of carbon dioxide. Now, Members got very sick of the Royal Society playing political games and frightening people with this and actually forced the society to come out in public and say, well, not quite the way it is. And this is exactly the words they came out the other day. It is not possible to determine exactly how much the earth will warm or exactly how much the climate will change in the future. Now, that should kill off any discussion about climate because we've never had a debate about climate. We've only had dogma. We've only had politicised science. We've only had people trying to frighten us witless. And I'm too old, ugly and hungover to be frightened by anything. <laughs> Tell me, just go back, rewind a bit. The one four hundredth of carbon dioxide. Explain that to our listeners. One, well, what humans are adding to the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. It is a trace gas but it's not the great Satan. And the trace gas in the atmosphere is one four hundredth of a percent in the atmosphere. And we're adding a very small part of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So every year the oceans breathe out carbon dioxide and every year we get a cycling of carbon dioxide. Three percent of the annual turnover of carbon dioxide is from human activity. The rest of it's natural. Mm. And so these people, they want taxes to the hilt, are asking us to pay for the 3% that humans put there, but not the 97%. Can you believe, just while you're on that, can you believe this climate committee that's been put together and the only members on that committee have had to agree, firstly, with the concept of global warming and, secondly, to agree that we need a carbon tax at the same time or a price on carbon? And that is your only qualification to get on the committee to debate so-called... Um, you know, a, a price on carbon, whether we should have one or not. Well, that's quite right. Uh, it reminds me very much of those committees of, of communist people, all stern-faced, is the pun, all stern-faced there, um, supporting the the popular view. Uh, I knew I wouldn't get involved in that committee. I had a 
bet with one of the major networks, one that we pay eight cents a day for and um, that does the barking of uh, certain causes. I had a bet of a slab of beer, which I couldn't possibly taste at present, that um, they would not invite me. They're not going to invite anyone to give balance because this is politicisation. And when you look at your electricity bill, then you have to conclude that you are being robbed, you are being conned. This is a mechanism of taxing you more with ideological electricity, with ideology that's not substantiated by science. In light of this report from the Royal Society, should we put any story in what was produced by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change? Well, not at all. We've had uh, Climate Gate, the emails that show that this is a political movement of bullies who are stopping an alternative view. We've had the railway engineer in charge of the IPCC. Here we've got a railway engineer telling us how climate's going to change. Well, blow me down. <laughs> well, maybe it's their turn to be a little bit more honest, Ian, do you think? Oh, I, I very much think so. And there's a few basic questions. For example, we warmed from 1860 to 1880. Then we cooled to 1910. Then we warmed to 1942. Then we cooled to 1975. Then we warmed to 2002. But in the meantime, carbon dioxide's been going up. So we've had warming and cooling, yet carbon dioxide's been going up. There is no relationship. We are currently in a cooling phase, and that cooling phase, if we look back in time, we've only got to look back 150 years, it's probably a 30-year period of cooling. Mm. What sort of impact will what the Royal Society said on the weekend, what is that likely to have on the views of uh, sceptics and those who are sort of teetering either side and have done their research and are a little bit confused? What, what impact will this have, do you think? I think the impact will be for those of us that are rationalists who are sceptical about everything we're presented with, uh, it'll just reinforce what we've known for decades. For the average punter out there, I think they'll realise, well, wait a minute, we have been conned for a long period of time. For the Greens and the deep green environmentalists and many politicians, they will get more shrill, they'll want to um, dig in more and... We have to really recognise that this is a game of trying to tax everyone a lot more money than they pay now. So uh, for me, I think there'll be a slight change around the uncertain areas in the middle of people who don't know where to go. But I think those um, dogmatic, dark green environmentalists are not going to change. I'll let you get back to the couch and uh, you take it easy on your day off, Ian. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much. Yes. Professor Ian Plymer. Professor of Mining Geology at Adelaide University. There you go. He loves his footy and loves enjoying a good win, a good premiership, and why not? And uh, he makes sense, and it's always made sense on this issue. But there we have it. The Royal Society, described as the definitive voice of science, now admitting that there are gaps in the scientific understanding and that there is uh, a lot of uncertainty about what will happen to the world in future. 131873 is the telephone number. It's 25 minutes after one. Chris Smith across Australia.